the last time she saw him. The last time she saw the man who had stolen her heart. Oh, Eva, you're killing me. Gabriel August. I've already pre-ordered my copy. I know. I set aside that whole weekend just to read it. I'm almost as excited about the new book as I am about seeing his face. I bet he's so handsome. Uh. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't let the world know that I'm Gabriel August. It's part of the deal, Liam. You knew that when you signed. Yeah, but I never thought the first book would actually be successful. I did. Didn't I tell you it would be a bestseller? I just assumed you were being nice. Oh, I've known you since you were bored. I don't need to be nice. You can't stay anonymous forever. Readers form connections with the books they love. They want a relationship with the author. You're a success, Liam. Why can't you embrace it? Oh, speaking of which, the manuscript for your next book is due, and I haven't seen any chapters. Oh, I've written plenty of chapters and then promptly thrown them in the trash. Well... You are going to have to find the inspiration somewhere because you still owe Harris Kingsfield two books. You sure, there's no way we can just get him to postpone the whole Gabriel August reveal. It's been almost impossible holding them off this long. It's time. Why don't you go up to the cabin in Portland for a couple of weeks, and I'll see if I can get the reveal moved out there. You wrote First Star of Evening there in less than a month. I wrote it as a joke. You wrote it because Catherine broke your heart. Portland has always been a great place for you to get your center again. Just like it was for your parents. I remember when your mom told me they were buying a place up there. I thought they were crazy. So far from everything. But became their little hideaway. Get out of town for a while. Clear your head. And get ready for the best chapter of your life. The next one is going to be a great one. This will serve as the final boarding call for flight 782 to Denver and continuing on to Portland. Here. Welcome aboard. Sorry. Here, I'll take your bag. The cab driver dropped me off at the wrong terminal. I can barely walk in heels, much less run. <laughs> One C, right up here in first class. Are you sure? Your upgrade went through. You're kidding. That never happens. Must be your lucky day. Oh, thank you. Hi. Hello. Oh, first class. Feels so special. We'll even bring you a glass of champagne if you want. No, no, I, I shouldn't. Well, maybe just one. But I, I have lots of work to do, so don't worry. I won't be talking your ear off the whole time. Do you live in New York? No, I'm heading home, Portland. I was just in the city for a couple of job interviews. I hope they went well. We'll see. Everybody was really nice. Maybe too nice. I, it's just so hard to know what people are really thinking. I wish they would just say what they mean. Things would be so much easier that way. Not always. Sometimes the truth hurts. It hurts a lot less than lies. Sounds like the voice of experience talking. That obvious? <laughs> Champagne? Two. Uh, definitely. To a great flight? With lots of fabulous legroom. focused. It's good. It 
wants to be, if that makes any sense. The new Gabriel August. Thought the book wasn't out. Mm, I got an advanced copy. You read Gabriel August? <laughs> no, but I've heard of him. Yeah, you don't, you don't really seem like his typical demographic. So you don't like this one? No, I, I do. It's just his first book. First Star of Evening was so good. Really? I, I think the first novel was such a success because it was just so honest. You, you really felt like you knew those characters. Sounds like I should give it a read. Absolutely. Yeah. But just maybe skip this one. It's a little disappointing. It doesn't feel real. It's, it's like he took the first book and stuck it in a blender and mixed it up and put a new title on it. Oh, that's harsh. Well, I guess. I just, I hate to see such potential go to waste. Have you heard about this? He has this whole marketing gimmick. He's very mysterious. It's a little ridiculous. You think it's a gimmick? What else could it be? Sure he has his reasons. Whatever it is, I guess it's working because along with every other woman in America, I am actually curious to find out who he really is. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has begun our descent into Portland and will be landing shortly. Well, this has ruined me. I don't think I can go back to coach. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna finish. Hey. Hey there. <laughs> you look like you're in a hurry. <laughs> Staff meeting at work. I'm barely gonna make it. Do you want me to help you with your bag? Looks like you're the one that could use the help. Oh, sorry. I gotta run. It was really nice meeting you. Yeah, you too. I'm not usually so jammed up at the taxi line. Just my luck. My boss will kill me if I'm late again. I'm happy to give you a lift. My mom always told me never to accept rides and limos from strangers I met on airplanes. <laughs> Your mom gave you very specific advice. <laughs> Come on, it's got just as much leg room as first class. We can even split the tip if that makes you feel better. I don't even know your name. Liam. Sophie. Well, I guess we aren't strangers anymore. So, you said you live in New York? Mostly. I like spending time in Portland, though. Mm, I love it here. What do you do? Um, freelance project consulting. So, you have any plans for tonight? Uh, <laughs> actually, I do. Um, my two best friends have their engagement party. Well, they were just friends for years. This whole falling in love thing has kind of come out of nowhere. It's taken a little getting used to. But it's a good thing. It's a great thing. Oh. Looks like the street's blocked ahead. I can't be any later. The office is only a couple of blocks away. I, I think I'm gonna hoof it from here. Oh, right, okay, well, if you ever want... Oh, right, we, we were gonna split the tip. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Stop. Okay, my friends are never gonna believe that I got to fly in first class and ride in a limo on the same day. <laughs> Do you mind if I take a picture? Oh, uh, no, of course not. Hey, Wait, my turn.
Thank you. Happy to help. Hi. I'll be right back. Job interviews went well. A couple of the magazines were interested. I'm just not sure I want to move to New York. We may not have a choice. I don't know how long this paper's going to survive. Really? What's going on? Berkman fired four more staffers while you were gone. It keeps getting worse instead of better. Not as cute as you, of course, but he's definitely hot. Who is he? We sat next to each other on the plane, and then he ended up giving me a ride. In a limo. Can't believe you rode in a car with the guy you just met. He was in first class. How dangerous could he be? So when are you going to see him again? It wasn't like that. I don't even have his number. Why not? Are you not into hot guys anymore? <laughs> OK. It's nice if a guy isn't too hard on the eyes, but that kind of thing being really important, never again. I wonder why was he in a limo? You think he's famous or just rich? Neither. He was some kind of consultant. He's he's just a regular guy. Hey, man, you want to play man coverage on the outside? Fine by me. Just don't be surprised when I shred the secondary. <laughs> Harris, you mind changing that channel? Heads up, St. Louis. You're next. Come next Sunday. We own you. <laughs> good riddance. You're too good for that low life anyway. You OK? Sure. I love seeing my ex on TV screens everywhere I go. I also love having the whole world know that he cheated on me. But the thing that's so annoying is that I had no idea. I mean, how could I have had no clue? He was a sneaky rat, that's why. So what am I supposed to do, just assume? That every guy I meet is lying to me? Not every guy, just most of them. You just gotta wait till the right one comes along. Trust me, you'll meet someone much better. Well, maybe she already has. Limo guy sounds no. interesting. Honey, that, that's a terrible idea. She's just been through a big breakup, public breakup. She should just take her time. No, no way. Sophie needs to get right back out there and start dating. No, she doesn't. Yes, she does. Uh, OK, will you just stop? I will be fine. I would have preferred not to have the whole world read about my love life on practically every gossip website, but that's what you get when you date a famous person. I promise you, though, I, I'm totally fine. Totally fine? Well, I'm getting there. It's only been a few days. I'm really starting to get into it, though. Uh, get that old Gabriel August engine revved up and racing again. So it's going well. 
Absolutely. Portland was a great idea. Good. I was starting to worry about you. You haven't written a thing, have you? <laughs> Why do you think that? Because you sound way too relaxed. Maybe you should shake things up a little. Go out with friends or on a date or something. Well, I did meet a nice woman on the plane. Perfect. Call her up. I don't know her last name, and I have no idea where to find her. Can't ever do anything the easy way, can you? Oh, I changed the Gabriel August reveal to Jasper's book loss out there in Portland, so you won't have to fly back to New York for it. Oh, so this is really happening? I'll be there. It'll be Liam and Jackie, just like always. But I'll be the one up there in front of all those people. I know it's going to be hard for you to let go of this Gabriel August mystique, but you can't keep leading two lives like this. This is a good thing. Have I ever steered you wrong before? Is that a trick question? <gasps> I'll call you when I get out there. <laughs> you can show me your town, Mr. Portland. Is it a date? Yeah, it's a date. Bye. Bye. Well, as you probably guessed, we got our new numbers back, and they're not pretty. Circulation is down 23% from the same time last year. So going forward, I have it from on high that we need to spice things up. I need your pieces to jump off the page, get noticed. If you want to do a feel-good puff piece on a peewee baseball team, scrap it and find out when the trailblazers are firing their coach. They want us to make noise, get retweeted or Facebooked or whatever the kids are doing these days. Books, movies, restaurant reviews, nothing's just OK anymore. They're either fantastic or the worst thing you've ever seen. I'm talking extreme opinions. But you don't want us to write reviews we don't believe in, do you? Well, if that's what it takes, then yeah. It's how we generate web hits and subscriptions. Look, I don't love it, but it's a hand we're dealt. All right, I'll have new assignments for all of you in a few. Make me proud. Okay. Sophie, I've got something for you that might be interesting. After your little speech, I'm almost afraid to ask. That review you're doing on Gabriel August's new book? I I'm not gonna turn it into a hatchet piece just to get more tweets. I got something even better. I just found out that Jaspers is hosting Gabriel August's little coming out party tomorrow night right here in Portland. I want you to cover it. We'll run it with the review. Wait, he's revealing his true identity here? Why Portland? It's your job to find out. Breaths. This is a good thing. Oh. Once this is over, you can stop leading two lives. I'll never just be Liam Bradley. All everyone will care about is Gabriel August. That's who I'll be from now on. It's going to be OK, I promise. And it's going to feel so good to finally get this off your chest. OK, I think it's time. OK, we don't want to keep them waiting. I'm going to go and make the introduction. You wait here. I point to you, and that's it. And the world meets Gabriel August for the first time. OK. I'm as ready as I can be. You're going to be great. They're going to love you. You should take that seat in the front. Got it. If I can have your attention, I think you're all about as excited to be here tonight as I am. With millions of books sold worldwide over the last three years, Gabriel August has touched all our hearts. He has made us fall in love, and he has made us cry. It's my pleasure to introduce to you the man behind these incredible stories. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to introduce you all to the writer you've come to know as Gabriel August. might find you here. This was always your favorite spot to write. I can't fool you, can I? No. And you'd best remember that. I am. What were you thinking? I was standing there like an idiot pointing at no one. I'm really sorry. I just I panicked. Your publisher is furious. They're threatening to release your name and information themselves. Well, they can't do that. Well, they won't. Not yet. 
I told them if they did, we'd sue them and we'd make a big, ugly public spectacle. <laughs> you must not be very popular over there. It's not my job to be popular. It's my job to look after my clients, even the ones that make me crazy. Um, More bad news. Um, One of the first reviews for By the Lighthouse, it's pretty disappointing. Tepid attempts at conveying human emotion. Hmm. It's her. Oh. Sophie, the girl from the plane and limo ride. That's why she was at the bookstore. It's right about Gabriel August. This is incredible. Incredible? I'd hate to hear what you think a bad review looks like. like. I gotta go. I'll talk soon. Liam! We gotta find her. Liam! We still have to talk about rescheduling your reveal. I'll call you later. Leak. Sophie. Sorry, that, that was totally my fault. No, no, it was all me. They need to pass a no texting while walking belt like New York. They have those there? Right. <laughs> so where are you heading in such a rush? Home. I just got off work. I write book reviews for the Portland Record. Really? Well, that sounds interesting. Look, I realize we just met, you know, again, but... Maybe you'd like to grab a bite to eat sometime. Uh, that's really nice, but I have a lot of work to uh, do. Oh, come on. You eat, I eat. Let's eat at the same table. <laughs> Persistent, aren't you? Well, I'm usually not, but it seems like this might be worth it. One meal couldn't hurt, right? I suppose not. I think I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> That's like fate. Okay, don't get carried away. But here's the interesting part. His parents are Devin Hillman and Helen Bradley. The movie stars? You're kidding. No. Are you sure? Yeah. I saw a picture of him with them. Well, that's why he rides in limos and flies first class. His parents were celebrities. He was just 19 when they died in that plane crash. That was so sad. That's awful. Do you think it's weird that he didn't mention it to hide something so important? You hardly know him. Why would he tell you the most traumatic story of his life when you guys haven't even been on a date yet? I know. You're right. I'm, I'm just... You're being paranoid, that's what. Not all guys are hiding things like James. You need to give Liam a chance. Who's this Liam? The guy that Sophie's going on a date with. It, it's not a date. It's just dinner. Why are you holding back? You either like him or you don't. I, I do like him. I just, I wish I knew him better. Hello. That's what a date's for, to get to know somebody. I thought I knew James. I never liked that one. That's right. You didn't. You guys knew there was something wrong before I did. That's how I'll know. I'll introduce him to you, and you can tell me what you think. You want us to crash your date? Brilliant, right? Yeah, let, let me check him out first. Thank you. Just because you don't answer the phone doesn't mean I'm going to go away. I honestly was not trying to avoid you. OK, maybe I was, but not for the reason you think. I was actually writing today. That's great. Well, it wasn't great, but it was something anyway. The words, they are coming. I don't like them once they're on the page. So kind of less of a writer's block issue and more of a heart not being in it issue. And don't you look dapper. Uh, I found her. Sophie, we're going to dinner. You really like this girl, don't you? I haven't seen you like this in ages. I, um, you know, I, I felt something when I met her, something strange. 
She's not like other women. She's interesting and, and <laughs> unique. And she tells it like it is, right? How did you know that? I know you pretty well after all these years, honey. I feel nervous around her, but it's, it's a good nervous. Yeah, I'd be a bit nervous, too, if I was going out with somebody who hated my book so much. She doesn't know? It really hasn't come up yet. I'm going to let you get ready for your date, Liam, but please be careful. I worry enough about your ability to lead one double life. I don't think you have the heart for a second. Come on in. Hi. Um, hello. Uh, it was the strangest thing. I was getting ready and... Drew and I were in the neighborhood and wanted to return a book to Sophie. Uh, this one. Uh, <laughs> where are my manners? Um, Drew and Nina, this is Liam. No limo tonight? Uh, I have a car here in town. So you have a place here and a place in New York. You don't really see that very often. Exactly what kind of consulting do you do? Uh, Drew, you don't need to interrogate poor Liam here. I thought that's what I was supposed to do. How about a glass of wine? Wine sounds wonderful. And it gives us the opportunity to get to know a little bit more about Liam here. Great. So, how long were you in Guyana? I did the full two-year volunteer rotation. It's really an amazing country. That must have been tough, though. Volunteering was the hardest thing I ever did, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. Oh. You're full of surprises. Well, this has been fun. Uh, we should all go out when we have more time. Absolutely. And Drew, I'm gonna hold you to your off to play hoops. I know LeBron James, but maybe Dwayne Wade. All right, but I will warn you. Once I lace up, I'm more like 6'6 six, six with a 40-inch vertical, so. <laughs> have fun tonight, kids. Bye. And thanks for um, bringing the book back. I think they liked you. Oh, well, that's great. But they're not the ones I'm trying to impress. <sighs> I like you, too. No, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> you ready for dinner? I have the perfect place. I, I was surprised. Nina, Drew, and I have been friends forever. So what made them start to date? Actually, I think they've been in love for years, but they were both just so afraid of ruining the friendship that they never gave it a chance. How's the cobbler? Mm -hmm. Wonderful, Harris, as always. Everything is delicious. You mean that, or are you just saying what you think I want to hear? Uh, no, it was really good. Oh. Sorry, I've got to take this. Oh. Mark. So, Liam, you ever been married? Uh, no. Why not? Something wrong with you? <laughs> so, no alarm bells went off for either of you? We loved him. Even Drew, who was prepared to duke it out with him beforehand. How's your dinner going? Uh, we're having a nice time, but he still hasn't mentioned his parents, and he keeps changing the subject every time I bring up his work. Give him time. How's it going with Harris? doesn't look good. Maybe I shouldn't have left him alone. Well, let me know how it goes. Because he seems really great. Bye. That's her recipe for peach cobbler you're eating. It's the best I've ever tasted, honestly. Am I interrupting? Not at all. Come, sit. <laughs> I was just telling Liam here the story of Lola and why I named the restaurant after her. I thought you didn't like to talk about that. Well, the story's not for everyone, but Liam here seemed to understand. I'm sorry you lost her so soon. Well, it's better to have loved and lost and all that, right? I like to think she's here with me every day. 
Nice to meet you, Liam. You too. Uh, the next time, you, you've got to try the chocolate mousse. It's not to be missed. Can't wait. What? Wow, he must really like you to open up about Lola. Is that a good thing? Yes, it's a great thing. Harris actually likes him. Loved him. Sounds like he passed your little test, right? With flying colors. But he still won't talk about his work or his family. It's, it's like he's an open book about some things and then completely mysterious about others. It sounds like the problem isn't him, it's you. What are you talking about? I get that you have trust issues. Who wouldn't in your position? You need to be careful not to project your stuff on the Liam. It's not fair. Okay, well, what about just, just one more test? I felt so much better after he met you guys last night and you liked him. Sophie. It, okay, just hear me out. I want to see him at work. Just find out what this whole consulting thing is all about. I mean, what can it hurt? Come on. Can't talk now, finally in the zone. Failed to hear it, but we still need to meet to go over the details of the rescheduled reveal. Today is not good. So today, at 1 o'clock, at the River Village restaurant, I booked a lovely outdoor table. You can walk over from the marina. Can we do this later this week? See you at 1. I was going to call you, but I didn't want to bother you at work. I was worried about the same thing. I... I'm not interrupting, am I? Not at all. Really enjoyed last night. Me too. I... What was that? Are you... are you at the marina? Uh, uh yeah. I'm, uh, meeting a client at River Village Restaurant at 1. A business meeting. A client? Um, that's good. Maybe we can figure out a time to see each other again. Yeah, I... I'd like that. Um, I've got to go. Bye. Bye. So I've rescheduled the reveal for Friday at 6, and I will handcuff you to me if I have to. It's such terrible timing. Sophie and I are just starting to get to know each other. You haven't told her, have you? Well, once she finds out I'm Gabriel August, that's all I'll be to her. That's all I'll be to everybody. How can you know that if you don't trust her enough to tell her the truth? Well, you know how it was with my parents. People treated them differently because they were stars. Hi. Oh, no, this is not happening. It's her. Oh, she's pretty. Hey. Sophie, this is a surprise. I, I was um, covering a story just uh, around the corner, and I remembered you saying you were having lunch here, so. So you just stopped by? That's weird, isn't it? It, it was all very spontaneous. Um, I'll leave you to your lunch. <laughs> You're Jackie Billix, literary agent. Oh, I'm, I have to say, I'm, I'm not used to being recognized outside of New York. I saw you speak in 2011 at the Brooklyn Publishing Symposium. You, you were so inspiring. Jackie, this is Sophie Atkinson. Uh, it's wonderful to meet you, Sophie. I actually write book reviews for the Portland Record, and I probably owe you and Gabriel August a bit of an apology. My review wasn't very favorable. No apology needed. You were just doing your job. I can't believe you didn't tell me you knew Gabriel August's agent. Well, it's great to meet you. I'll let you two talk. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, this is just a social call anyway. Please join us. Please. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. I keep telling Gabriel that he'll feel better if he tells the world who he is. But men, you know? So stubborn. But, but it is really happening. Oh, yeah, next Friday. If I have to drag him kicking and screaming. <laughs> OK, at the risk of sounding like a teenager, what is he like? <laughs> well, he's uh, smart, 
quite smart when he wants to be. He is genuinely talented. He is very handsome. He's also obstinate. He is private to a fault. And sometimes he exhibits the same amount of judgment as my beagle. <laughs> Oh, I, I felt bad writing the review I did, but the truth is, I really want his next book to be great, like the first one. And maybe not having secrets will help. Maybe his next book will be his masterpiece. I hope so, Sophie. Well, I've got a deadline that needs some love. Jackie, I am so glad we got the chance to talk. Same here, and next time you're in New York, give me a jingle, oh, we'll have lunch. I would love that. I will see you later. Can't wait. I'll call you. Not you. <laughs> wow. Thanks for that, Jackie. You need to tell her. Before this, whatever this is between you two goes any further. Well, it's easier said than done. I never said it was going to be easy. It's so beautiful down here. I never think to do this. I come here every sunset. Helps clear my head. It's one of my favorite things about the city. Why Portland? I, I have a feeling you could be just about anywhere right now. Oh, yeah? Well, I can ask you the same thing. <laughs> Portland's my home. Truth? Truth. I spent some time here as a kid. Always loved it. What? <laughs> OK, I, uh, I'm really bad at this, but I have a confession to make. Oh, good confession or bad confession? I actually know who you really are. Oh, I see. You're not mad at me? Why would I be mad? Because I didn't tell you the truth. You're entitled to your privacy. I imagine growing up with famous parents must have been hard. You met my parents. Right. Yeah, it was complicated. Life in the spotlight could be rough. Believe me, I know. Yeah? I had a bad experience dating a famous person. Actually, we were engaged. It, it ended a few months ago. Engaged? I probably should have mentioned it earlier. No, not at all. Were you okay? It was hard at first, but much better the last few days. I'm glad to hear that. One of the magazines I interviewed at in New York that's been a comfort for them. That's a big change. Mm -hmm. I may not have a choice. It seems like the daily days are numbered. Oh, sounds like a great opportunity. <laughs> I was thinking of it more as a huge disaster. Well, I just mean, you know, it gives you a chance to figure out what it is you really want to do. Maybe make a change if you want. Sometimes I give anything to just start over. This is me. You know, you're really easy to talk to. Not always, but it's easy with you. Thank you. For what? I don't know. Just being Liam Bradley. Tuesday's perfect. Uh, see you then. You should come. It's so much fun. I'm afraid I'm not much of an answer. I'll give you a few pointers. You'll be an expert by the end of the night. <laughs> uh, remember, 8.30, it's called Frankfurt over on Burnside. See you there. Nice to meet you. You too. Hey! Oh, hi! I just missed this totally gorgeous guy. Did I? I think he liked me, but who knows? It's so hard to tell sometimes. Mm. But I asked him out. Do you think that was too forward? I don't know. 
What did he say? I didn't give him a chance to say anything. I hate being rejected. Guess I'll find out tonight, huh? <sighs> Come on, Horton will kill us. We're late. I wasn't sure if you would call tonight. I stopped by your office earlier. I thought you might want to grab lunch. Oh, yeah? Um, sorry I missed you. It, it sounds like you're in the car. Are you going somewhere special tonight? Uh, you know, just clearing my head. I'm actually way behind on this project. I'll probably spend most of the night working. Working? Um, that doesn't sound very fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm not looking forward to it. But we're still on for tomorrow, right? I guess. If you still want to. Of course I do. I'll see you then, okay? Okay. Bye. Bye. Working all night, huh? You could have just told me. Sophie? Oh. You're not... This isn't... Uh, this is my friend Peter. What are you doing here? Good question. I felt like the world's biggest jerk. I should have trusted Liam. You're not the world's biggest jerk. I mean, there have to be at least two bigger ones. You you were completely right. This was just about me being scared. Hey, don't beat yourself up too much. Nobody blames you for being careful about who you date. But eventually, you need to take a leap of faith and jump back in. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm seeing Liam tonight. I'm just going to come clean about everything and tell him the truth. Do you think that's a good idea? What kind of relationship can I hope to have if it starts out being dishonest? Are you sure this doesn't fall into the what he doesn't know won't hurt him category? We just don't want to see you get hurt again. I need to do this. You have to tell her the truth. I am tonight. How are you going to do it? I'm taking her to the cabin. I'll tell her there. But I just hope she doesn't freak out. I mean, if she thinks I've been lying to her this whole time. Stop. <sighs> Liam, you're doing the right thing. Look at the bright side. This will make your big reveal a whole lot easier one way or another. And I am proud of you for doing that, too. Not like I have much choice. <laughs> OK, hugs, like the good old days. Mm. <laughs> I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah, I'll be thinking of you, kiddo. Good luck. That's so cozy. Makes me want to curl up with a good book and a glass of wine. I always came here with my parents. Do you have one of those spots you go to and you just feel safe? Forest Park. There's this old wooden bridge surrounded by trees. When I get stressed, I just stand there and listen to the water, and all the troubles melt away. It's a magical place. It sounds wonderful. Everybody needs some place to escape to. Exactly. That's what it's like for me out here. Dinner awaits. Oh, it's beautiful. I didn't realize you were such a romantic. Yeah, I didn't either. This is delicious. Mm. I can't cook to save my life, but I am fantastic at ordering one. <laughs> uh, look, there's something important I need to tell you, but I'm not really sure how to say it. Uh, more couscous? I do. I'm fine. Right, uh, all right. Uh, the thing is, when we first met, I didn't think things would progress so far. And... Liam, wait. Before you say anything, I, I have to tell you something. I haven't been totally honest with you. 
You haven't? Remember how I told you I recently went through a bad breakup? You're getting back together with him. What? No, I, I, absolutely not. Never. I, I just... The whole thing actually hit me a lot harder than I admitted. Yeah. He was a professional athlete, and the breakup was very public and pretty humiliating, honestly. My terrible love life went viral. Must have been awful. Yeah. A word of advice, never date a famous person. I won't make that mistake again. The worst part, though, was that this man that I thought I loved ended up being someone completely different than I thought he was. I guess I just lost my ability to trust men. And so when I met you, I was like, wow, too good to be true. And so I've kind of been giving you little tests just to prove that you aren't too good to be true. Tests? Yeah, this is embarrassing. I, my friends interrogating you, me dropping by during your lunch with your client. <laughs> I, I kind of arranged those things just to help myself make sure that this was real. Oh, and the girl you met in front of my office, Tabitha, we actually worked together, and I overheard her asking you out. You're the only woman I wanted to go out with. I know that now. And I should have trusted it from the beginning. I'm so sorry, Liam. I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> so that's it? That's what you haven't been honest about? You hate me, don't you? Sophie, I don't hate you. I'm falling in love with you. That went better than I thought it would. <laughs> I feel so much better having that out in the open. I, I've been so nervous all night. Uh, there was something you wanted to say to me. What? Oh, oh, nothing. Are you sure? I'm so sorry. I, I feel like I kind of hijacked your moment. Ah, it's not important. More wine? Please. Mm. I can't wait to see what's for dessert. <laughs> What was I supposed to do? You were supposed to tell her the truth. Well, this athlete she was engaged to broke her heart, and half the country was talking about it. She swore she'd never date a famous person again. What do you think she's going to do when she finds out who I really am? I can't just dump all this on her. You've run out of time. The reveal is tomorrow night. Well, then let's postpone it. We can't. Get me a meeting with the publishers. I'll find a way to change their mind. It won't be easy to convince them, Liam. Well, I'll find a way to convince them. I have to. They can't do that. Unfortunately, the suits call the shots, and they can do whatever they want. But just to cut all the book reviews, that that doesn't even make any sense. I want more space for video games and movies. They're even making me create a whole new section on celebrity gossip. Book reviews just don't have enough juice these days. Look, I have been a team player, Phil, covering music and movies, whatever you needed. But you know the book reviews are what I love. That's the reason I came to The Daily. What can I tell you, Sophie? It's a business. Lots of people read books. I, I mean, sure, it, it's a changing industry, no but... No more book reviews. I wish it was different. Then I don't know if I can stay. I need to figure out what it is I want to do. It's a decision you're gonna have to make. Make it quickly, I got a paper to run. So you don't think it's a stupid thing to do? Not at all, but it's a big step. I'm terrified. But I think it's what I want. You're right, that's what's important. That sounds like a good plan. I'm gonna go with my gut. I guess it worked with you yesterday. That's right. 
Look, I, I found out that I have to go to New York for a meeting tomorrow, so I'm a little frazzled. I fly out in a couple hours. Wait, New York, why? Just a contractual thing I need to address, but I have to do it in person. How long will you be gone? Just overnight. I'll be back tomorrow. Well, do you think you might be up for a date night tomorrow night? How about an early dinner, say 5.30? Sure. I'm down for the early bird special. <laughs> Have a safe flight. OK. Bye. Bye. That sounds so romantic. Dinner by candlelight. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah. He told me he was falling in love with me, and then we kissed. Wow. And you want to know the best part? I trust him. Oh, yeah? Mm. Not a he passed the test kind of trust. A trust where I want to kick myself for having ever given him a test in the first place. I never thought I would feel like this about someone again, but it just keeps surprising me. This is so great. I'm so happy for you. He's on a trip to New York for one day, and I already miss him. When am I in high school? <laughs> you are in love. Oh. Okay, enough about my love life. I have something I want to show you. I put it together last night, and you have to promise me that you will be nice. Rivetingreads.com. What is it? My new business. Your new business? What about the paper? Oh, well, Liam said something to me the other day about following my dreams and doing what I want to do, and... I think this might be it. This is so fantastic. I have a meeting with my editor later, and then it goes live. Looks like Liam's good for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how are you holding up? <clears throat> I'm nervous. Yeah, so am I. Uh, you're not supposed to admit that to me. <laughs> Liam, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. These people are sharks, and I don't even know if they care enough to do what you're asking. So expectations are low. All right, <laughs> Liam, Jackie, it's great to see you both. Hey, are you as excited about the new sales as we are? Um, yeah. yeah, you should be. Please, have a seat. So, what can we do for you? First off, thank you so much for your time. Anything for one of our favorite authors? I'm not so sure how to put this, but for some personal reasons, um, I'm asking that you Reconsider having me reveal myself as Gabriel August. Uh, you do know the reveal is scheduled for tonight. Oh, no. I, I know. And I'll eventually go through with it. Just not tonight. I give you my word. Well, we don't really need your word, Liam. We have a contract that guarantees it. Right. I just need you to delay the reveal a few more weeks. Liam's not being unreasonable. He's just asking for more time. Jackie, he has already canceled once. This has all been timed to the release of the new book. We built a marketing approach, not to mention a substantial amount of effort and money around revealing Gabriel August's identity. And obviously, once that happens, it's the demands on Liam's personal life are going to be extreme. I just need a few more weeks. That's all I'm asking. Liam. They won't do it. I'm sorry. I fought for you in there, but the machine is just too far along for them to stop it now. The reveal is on for tonight. I'm really starting to hate Gabriel August. You need to talk to Sophie. I'm meeting her for dinner tonight at 5.30. That'll be cutting it close. We'll make it. OK. OK, so will we clear on the plan for later tonight? Jasper's book lost 7.30. Actually, make it 7 o'clock so my blood pressure doesn't get too high. I'll be there. Bad news? She's got a work meeting. She just canceled dinner. What are you going to do? Find her. I have to tell her before I make the announcement. It'll all be OK. Mwah. You call me. Let me know how it goes. And Sophie, tell me what's on your mind after the tone. Hey, Sophie, I got your text. I'm back in town. I really need to talk to you, like, right away, face to face. So call me the second you get this, OK? I know, but if you said it was background, you got to keep his name out of it. That's journalism 101. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let me know how it shakes out. <sighs> Sorry, I couldn't fit you in earlier. I had to keep a reporter from getting sued. What's up? I wanted to let you know that today's my last day. Your last day? 
So you're leaving the paper? I'm starting my own website. One where I get to do the kind of reviews that I want to do. Can you make a living doing that? <laughs> well, it, it may take me a few months to get enough advertisers, but I'm going to give it a try. Well, I hate to lose you, Sophie. But I have to admit I'm a little jealous. Having the freedom to write about the things you love sounds like the perfect job. So you're not angry? I hope whatever you do next makes you happy. Thank you for everything. Don't suppose I could talk you into showing your gratitude by giving me an article in the Gabriel August Reveal tonight? I can't. I'm already covering it for my own website. Call Sophie. And Sophie, tell me what's on your mind after the tone. Hey, it's, it's Tabitha, right? Oh, hi. <laughs> hey, you kind of stood me out. Uh, actually, to be fair, I never said I was going to meet you. You work with Sophie Atkinson, right? You know Sophie? Yeah, I is she here? She was, but she just quit. Cleaned out her desk about 20 minutes ago. Oh, do you know where she went? Jasper's to find out who Gabriel August really is. Thanks. <laughs> Jackie. Where are you? I'm on my way. Meet me at the back door of the bookstore in five minutes. Okay. What is going on? Can't go through with it. Why? Because she's here. Oh, you didn't tell her yet? I tried. I called. I texted. I went to her work. She's out there. I can't let her find out along with everyone else. Take a deep breath. I will handle this. Stay here. Hello, Sophie. Hi, <laughs> Jackie. Yeah. How exciting is this? Yeah, very. And a little terrifying, too. I, I can imagine. <laughs> is he going to show this time? He's already here. It's really happening, then. <laughs> Oh, I'm presuming you're here to cover this for your paper. Not exactly. I'm not with the Daily anymore. I'm actually here covering it for my own website, which just went online. Congratulations. Mm, thanks. You let me know if I can help in any way. Thanks. I, I may hold you to that. In fact, um, how would you like to scoop your old paper? What are we talking exactly? <laughs> Um, how about the first real exclusive interview with the real Gabriel August himself? Never meant to mislead you. I hope that we can... Leo? What are you doing here? Oh my gosh, you're not gonna believe. Gabriel August will be here any minute to chat with me. Jackie got me an exclusive. I'll be quick. I just need to say what I wanted to tell you earlier. Actually, it's what I wanted to tell you for a long time. Liam, what, what's going on? You're the first thing on my mind when I wake up in the morning. And the last thing I think about when I go to sleep. And you're in there a lot in between, too. So, um, although it's way past the time I should have told you this, here it goes. That crowd is here for me. For you. I'm Gabriel August. <laughs> And I'm J.K. Rowling. Nice to meet you. We don't want to keep you waiting in suspense any longer. 
Ladies and gentlemen, in a minute, it will be my pleasure to introduce to you, for the very first time, the real man behind Gabriel August. I'm sorry. I didn't want you to find out this way. That's crazy. You're, you're serious. I wanted to tell you before I should have. I never meant to hurt you, I promise. How could I have missed this? Sophie, please. I can't do this. No, please, just let me explain. Please talk to me. Wait, Sophie, I love you. I need to leave. I wanted to tell you, I swear. Here he is, Liam Bradley. I can't believe I let this happen again. website is keeping me super busy. I still can't believe he was lying to you all that time. I can't believe I didn't see it. I mean, I told the guy about Lola. You don't think he'll put that in some book one day, do you? He's probably forgotten about us already. He's got plenty to keep him busy these days. I'm not saying that what he did was OK, but I can sort of understand it given the circumstances. I mean, he can't be serious. For all we know, he was just using her to get a good review. Or maybe he wanted her to get to know him as a normal person, not some celebrity author. I, I, I don't know what to say. I really like Liam. Not too often I'm wrong about people. It's not your fault. It's nobody's fault but my own. I'll bring you a slice of Lola's cobbler. It always makes things a little better. Thanks. Look, I know it's been really rough. And if I were in the same place, I can't say that I'd feel any differently. But it's hard for me to believe that he didn't truly care about you. I'm not sure what to think anymore. But I, I do know one thing. I, I can't go back to this. Whatever we had, it's over now. This isn't a coincidence. 
Well, I remember you telling me how much you love Forest Park. That it was magical. Your place to escape. And Nina told me. But don't blame her. I called and practically begged her to help me out. I just wanted to talk to you before I go. You're leaving? Going back to New York. I can't be in Portland without you. And I can't take back being famous now. But I've been thinking a lot lately about how things went with us and... And what? We both made mistakes. We each came into this a little broken in some ways. But we both know we've never felt this way about anyone before. If you can find a way to forgive me, I know we can work past this. I do forgive you, ma'am. So you give us another chance. Part of you belongs to the world now. Whether you like it or not, they're, they're always going to be there. I did that before. And you know how badly it ended. I'm not him. I'm Liam Bradley. And I love you. Don't. I'm sorry, I, I can't do this again. On that plane when we first met, you told me that first hour of evening was good because it was honest. I, I probably said a lot of things. I'm sorry if I was... No, no, you were right. I spent the last few years pretending that I wasn't Gabriel August. That I was better than that. That I was meant to write real novels about people's real lives. But what's more real than a love story with a sad ending? I should go. I have a plane to catch. Goodbye, Sophie. Close the door. I'm here. One moment, he was alone and lost. And the next, she was there, filling the empty seat beside him. Uh, you're gonna miss your cab. Ah, oh, there'll always be another one. I think you're gonna like it. I know I do. That's the first time I've heard you say that. This isn't Vienna Sunset. No, it isn't. And you've put your name as the author. Notice that, did you? I know I'm not gonna like the answer to this, but what happened to Vienna Sunset? Kindling. <laughs> What have you done? What I should have done before. Written something that's honest and real. A book that I believe in, one that I am proud to put my name on. So I can see we're going to go a few more rounds with Harris Kingsfield. You up for it? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing I like better. I, uh, I can't wait for you to read it. I love seeing you like this. Excited and passionate. It's been a while. I feel great. Well, as great as I can, you know, I feel good about the work. The word from Sophie? No. Well, give her time. Anything's possible. You really think so? I do. Well, I better get rolling. Let me know what you think of the book. You know I will. Hey, hon. 
Cancel all my appointments today. And book me the first flight out to Portland. Oregon? Thanks. I'm pretty sure the plural of goose is geese. It's not gooses? <laughs> You'd think so, but alas. You're the boss. How long until the Broken Truth Chronicles review is done? Mm, you can't rush genius. So how long until the Broken Truth Chronicles review is done? Jackie. Hello, Sophie. This is such a surprise. I don't want to take up much of your time, but do you have a minute? This is really impressive. It's a labor of love. I've been working a lot more than I did at the paper, but I like my boss better. <laughs> You're okay otherwise. I know. It took a while, but I think I am now. I feel good. I'm happy for you. It's great seeing you, Jackie, but I am guessing there's a reason you flew all the way out to Portland. Liam is still in love with you, Sophie. Wow, you don't beat around the bush, do you? Well, I think it's best to say what I mean, and I think you of all people would appreciate that. Did Liam put you up to this? He would kill me if he knew I was here. How's he doing? Better. First few months were difficult. It was a lot to get used to. Hmm. I can imagine. Women must have been throwing themselves at him. There was only one woman whose opinion mattered. And she wasn't in New York. Why are you here, Jackie? Liam misses you a lot. And I'm guessing that you miss him just as much. And I thought you'd want to see this. What is it? His new book. Really? A, a new Gabriel August book? A new Liam Bradley book. The first, actually. Return to Forest Park. He took your advice. He wrote something honest, something he believes in. His book speaks from his heart. And he dedicated it to someone very special to him. Take care, Sophie. finally put a face to Gabriel August. And now you want to kill him off? Oh, I wouldn't put it quite that way. But, um, yeah, that is precisely what we want. The book that he was contractually obligated to give us, it's not a Gabriel August novel. Actually, if you look at the contract closely, I think you'll find that Liam Bradley owes you a new book, not Gabriel August. Gabriel August is Liam Bradley. Liam. Where's Vienna Sunset? The ashes might still be in the fireplace in Portland. I don't think it's going to do you much good. But we think you are going to love Liam Bradley's new book. Ted, I understand this is a business. And your profit is the bottom line, correct? Correct. Then I hope we have some good news for you. You know I'm a fan of test marketing my clients' new books. To be perfectly blunt, I found Liam's new book emotional and incredibly gripping. So, I commissioned a market evaluation research, and the results are in your hands. It achieved the highest rating of any book they've ever tested. You know market research doesn't guarantee success. It's the book business, Ted. There is no guarantee of success, but this is as close as it gets. It comes down to this. Gabriel August, as we all knew him, doesn't exist anymore. Liam Bradley does. And to be honest, I feel like I'm just getting started. I want Harris Kingsfield along for the ride. But one way or the other, I'm still moving forward. I'm sorry. Uh, 
it's okay. I feel like it's all my fault. If I hadn't introduced you to Liam, you never would have told him about Lola. I can't believe he wrote this in his book. It's okay. No, it's, it's not. Sophie, I told him it was okay. Liam called me. He asked my permission. You talked to him? He's a good man. I know you two had your problems. He's a decent guy. He made me look handsome and sexy like I told him to. How could he not? So, how is it? It's beautiful. And smart and funny, but so sad. Uh, Liam. When you were going out with James, I kept my mouth shut, figured you knew what you were doing without my help. You couldn't have been more wrong. I don't pretend to know much about relationships. I only loved one woman in my life. You found your one true love. I know that now. But when Lola and I were together, it wasn't always so clear. Loving someone's the hardest work there is. I messed up plenty, so did she. We disappointed each other sometimes. We said things we regretted later, but... We never... Let that keep us apart. No matter how bad things seemed at the time. It wasn't true love because it was easy. It was because we worked at it. We fought for it. What am I supposed to do? You're the only person that can answer that. Finally have a happy author. They're all out there for you. The real you. Thanks to you, you made all this happen. Well, that's sweet, but this had very little to do with me. Your parents would have been so proud. You think so? I know it. So, do I have to drag you kicking and screaming out onto the stage again? No. This time, I'm actually looking forward to it, shall we? Let's go knock him dead, kiddo. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. <clears throat> I know this is a bit unusual, but we have some wonderful news to share with you today. You recently met this gentleman as the author behind the Gabriel August novels. But today, we're here to talk about an exciting new direction. I'll let him tell you all about it. Ladies and gentlemen, Liam Bradley. I love writing. From as far back as I can remember, I was scribbling things down. I've been very fortunate to find people like you who actually want to read what I wrote. But for too long, I've stayed in the shadows. Well, I'm happy and actually pretty nervous <laughs> to
to say that those days are done. My new book is called Return to Forest Park. And as you can see, the only name on it is mine. Yes, sir. So are you just continuing the Gabriel August romances under a new name? Not at all. There is some romance in it, but this book is different. It's more a novel of discovery about a man finally finding himself. Is it autobiographical? I refuse to answer that on the grounds that I may incriminate myself. <laughs> Let's just say it's honest. Yes, miss. Does this mean you've walked away from your deal with Harris Kingsfield? No, I'm thrilled to be staying under the Harris Kingsfield umbrella. They've been incredibly supportive, and I look forward to a long future together. Mr. Bradley, it sounds like Return to Force Park is more personal than your previous novels. It does. I've learned a lot over this past year, and I hope that shows in this new book. I'd say it's the most personal book I've ever written. It must be hard being thrust into the spotlight like this. Are you worried that it might change you? Change isn't always a bad thing. I know I've been changing a lot lately. I'm sure, all this is challenging, but I finally learned to be comfortable in being Liam Bradley. And what you see is what you get. Can your fans count on that? My fans can rest assured that I would never do anything to hurt them. Because some of us still have deep-seated trust issues that we're working through. I'd like to help with those any way that I can. Are you sure you're up for it? Absolutely. May take a while. That's fine by me. Because I hope to spend every day for the rest of my life showing my fans just how much I love them. And you want to get your camera ready. I think you're going to want to get a shot of this. Speaking as a big fan myself, that sounds like a wonderful new chapter. Right here.